What's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Maxwell Cooper from Da Vinci Academy, and welcome back to another episode of Da Vinci Cases, Inside the Boards Edition. Inside the Boards is a medical education podcast platform that we've teamed up with to bring you a new series of video and audio clinical cases. Dr. Patrick Beeman from Inside the Boards and I will be walking you through these cases together, highlighting question dissection tips and how to apply concepts towards finding the correct answer. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Da Vinci Cases Inside the Boards edition. Uh, we've got our sixth case here for you. So uh, for this case, we have a 12-year-old boy presenting to clinic with right knee pain that began three months ago with no apparent cause. So that's important. You've got a kid with knee pain and no trauma. He has no past medical history. Physical exam demonstrates tenderness and swelling just above the right knee. An x-ray of the right knee reveals a heterogeneous lesion in the distal femur with both sclerotic and lytic components with and elevation of the periosteum on the lateral aspect. And then the question is, this patient's pathology is most likely to arise from which aspect of the bone? A, the bone marrow, B, the epiphysis, C, the diaphysis, and D, the metaphysis. Okay, so looking at uh, the key findings here, um, keep in mind I am an OBGYN, and uh, however I'm also you know generally a doctor. So the real test in the USMLE, um, NBME shelf exams, or other you know standardized exams within medical education is to learn to think clinically. So that's what I'm doing here. So what are the important points? Well, the ones that we often harp on in this series have been, you know, the demographics. So we've got a 12-year-old boy with a chief complaint of knee pain of a subacute uh, time frame of three months. No identifiable trauma, uh, no past medical history, and there's just some general findings on physical exam namely tenderness and swelling above the knee, with uh, objective x-ray findings showing a heterogeneous lesion in the distal femur with sclerotic and lytic components and, components and elevation of the periosteum. So my guess is, in this case, the appearance of the radiography here is going to be um, a key aspect of what we're trying to learn, which uh, of the following is responsible um, for this patient's pathology or which um, aspect of the bone does this patient's pathology arise from. So again, bone marrow, choice A, choice B, epiphysis, choice C, diaphysis, and choice D, metaphysis. And I am going to guess that it is metaphysis, choice D, and that is correct because it's highlighted after Max clicked. So, Yes. <laughs> so before we come back and go through the answer choices, I think there's some kind of some basic components we want to go through. So let's review the parts of a long bone. So this is a, a picture of those listening. There's a picture of the femur. Um, kind of a, uh, a section of the femur that, if you will, that shows you kind of the inner components as well. And so you want to really have these down the, you know, diaphysis, which is kind of the shaft of the bone or the long bone. This is the most strong and supportive. This is what helps bear the weight. Within here, you have the medullary cavity, which in adults can contains fat, and then in children actually contains your red marrow. Um, so that's kind of a change that happens with age. And then on the distal end, or the proximal end and the distal end of the long bone, so here up in the head of the femur, you have the epiphysis, and this is where you have the articular cartilage that forms, and then down here in the distal portion, you have the epiphysis as well, where you have the articular cartilage of the knee. And then lastly, you have the metaphysis, which are kind of these junctions between the diaphysis and the epiphysis, and you have it both proximally and distally here. And what's cool about the metaphysis is that it contains the growth plate. So you have the growth plate that's distal, and then you have these proximal growth plates as well um, that are, you know, turning over bone and, and growing bone as, as a child uh, goes through life. So some other components here, this is spongy bone up here. This is also some spongy bone down here in the distal aspect. And so this spongy bone contains the red marrow, and that's even in adults, which is where you have hematopoiesis and those uh, types of processes. 
Then you have the compact bone, which is, you know, what we think of when we think of bone, the very strong and sturdy and interwoven bone uh, right here on the outer portion of the diaphysis. Then you have the medullary cavity, like I was mentioning. And then here we have a nice cross section here, kind of if you took a cross section of the shaft or the diaphysis here. And what that shows you is that, you know, this is the compact bone. Then you have the medullary cavity within. And then you have this layer on the outside, which is just the periosteum, which is important to keep in mind because it was uh, mentioned in the x-ray findings, which we'll talk about in a second. And then you have the endosteum, which is this inner portion uh, of the uh, compact bone that kind of uh, juxtaposes the medullary cavity there. Okay, so now that we have these components of the bone down, it's all, let's kind of go through these tumors and where they're located. And like I was mentioning to Patrick earlier, is even on my radiology boards and then definitely on the USMLE, this definitely gets asked a lot, you know, whether the tumor is in the diaphysis or the epiphysis, and it kind of helps with understanding the underlying uh, biology of the tumor, but also can help you with your differential. If, you know, you get an x-ray and you see where it's located and you say, oh, you know, that's in the distal portions in the metaphysis, it can kind of help you narrow down your differential there. So first we'll go through some benign tumors. So first you have the osteochondroma, and you can see this here, and it's kind of these kind of funny looking appearing tumors on uh, x-ray where you can see them kind of sticking out this kind of like bony, you know, projection, if you will, or outpouching from the lateral aspect. And you see these in the metaphysis. Uh, so around the, you know, the growth plate area, these are typically in younger uh, individuals, typically males more so than females, you know, and younger meaning less than, you know, 25 years of age is typically, they're usually benign and they usually don't transform, but they do have that potential. So keep that in mind to transform. And then they usually develop in long bones around the knee, um, again, where these growth plates are, you know, indicated by the yellow lines here. So then you have these osteoid osteomas, uh, which are also these benign lesions. These typically present with nighttime pain. Um, they usually have kind of this central nidus, if you will, this kind of like central cyst, if you will, inside the mass as well. And those are seen in the diaphysis, and those are benign typically. The other thing here is you have what's called a giant cell tumor. So these are found in the epiphysis, and really for the purposes of the USMLE, this is really the only tumor you can see, your primary bone tumor you can see in the giant in the epiphysis. One thing I'll mention is, you know, these are all primary bone tumors. Obviously, people can have metastases, and those are typically in the general population much more common uh, to have bone mets uh, from some other type of primary. But for the purpose of this video, we're going through the the primary malignancies of bone. These usually have risk factors of either if patients were exposed to radiation, so if they've had like a lot of imaging or something like that. Also, trauma can put you at risk for a giant cell tumor. Still usually a benign tumor. Um, this one arises from osteoclasts, uh, so that's important. So they're essentially kind of these big balls of osteoclasts, and they have that kind of like lytic or destructive looking appearance as well. Then when we get as we get into the malignant tumors, you have the osteosarcoma, which is kind of the main one people think of. It's the most primary malignant bone tumor. So what's important about this tumor is one, it appears in the metaphysis or it arises in the metaphysis. It has a bimodal distribution. So kind of the younger patient population that you typically think of, you know, kids that are 10 to 20 years old. And then you also see another spike in patients that are over 65. Definitely some risk factors for this is Paget's disease of the bone. So, you, can, you know, you can see that in our older population, patients that developed a lot of bone infarcts, patients that have been exposed to radiation, um, and then patients that kind of have the, some of these genetic conditions that predispose them to cancer. So patients with familial retinoblastoma or lee Fremoni syndrome, which remember is a mutation in that P53 uh, regulator of the cell cycle. Again, these typically happen in long bones around the knee, so either the distal femur or the proximal tibia is usually where they occur. And then on imaging, is you very often will see, as we describe, is elevation of the periosteum, which is uh, called Codman's triangle. So it actually can kind of forms a triangular shape when it elevates. You kind of think of it as sticking a crowbar under that periosteal layer and kind of lifting it up. And these are very aggressive tumors. That's why you see both lytic lysis, which is bone destruction, and then you see bone formation as well because these are uh, arise from osteoblasts, so you're going to see bone formation as well uh, in these tumors. And then these are typically treated with, you know, surgery, surgical resection, and then uh, sometimes chemotherapy. And then the last one here we have is Ewing sarcoma. So this is typically in a younger, again, these are general, you know, age ranges just to kind of help you narrow this down. These are typically seen in young boys under the age of 15. They occur in the diaphysis of long bones. You can also see them in the pelvis or the scapula or the ribs. 
typically biology-wise described as an anaplastic small blue cell tumor. They're very aggressive. They metastasize early. Something to keep in mind for both Ewing's and osteosarcoma is that they tend to metastasize to the uh, x-ray. So if you're getting asked about clinical management, oftentimes ordering a, a chest x-ray is kind of the first part of uh, staging the tumor or staging the patient. And then as far as the x-ray appearance, it's kind of an onion skin shape. So they have essentially multiple layers like you would see with a onion on x-ray. So if we come back to the question here, we'll break down these answer choices to help you keep, in, keep straight all these different uh, tumors and where they arise from. Choice A, bone marrow. Yeah, I guess the the thing we'd be looking for here is not a primary bone tumor, but rather hematologic malignancy um, is going to rise within the bone marrow itself. So this you should be thinking leukemia or lymphoma. Choice B, the epiphysis. What do we see here? Um, in the epiphysis, you'll see giant cell tumors, which are benign technically, but locally aggressive. So they can have kind of a um, destructive um, pattern to the bone itself. Uh, you're going to have a young adult, 20 to 40 years of age, and you want to remember soap bubble appearance on x-ray. Uh, risk factors are prior trauma and radiation. I feel like the most important thing for testing purposes, though, would be giant cell tumor equals located in epiphysis with soap bubble appearance on x-ray. I can't particularly think of an easy way to remember that, and therefore uh, choice C, diaphysis. <laughs> um, diaphysis, uh, this one I can think of an easy way to remember this. So um, of all the things we mentioned... I think it was all of them, right? The the diaphysis is really um, the locus of Ewing sarcoma um, and none of the others that we mentioned, um, if I'm correct, right? That's the only malignant one. And then osteo osteoma is, is, is also seen, which was one of the benign tumors. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Well, at least for malignant ones. So... Um, the malignant ones have the word sarcoma in them, so that is helpful. But also, diaphysis begins with a D, which is right next to the E in the alphabet. So that's probably how I would remember Ewing, E-W-I-N-G, sarcoma, and its location at the diaphysis. And then the final was choice D, the metaphysis, which was the correct answer. And we covered osteochondroma being the benign tumor um, arising from the metaphysis. And uh, osteosarcoma has sarcoma in it, so it is malignant. Um, and I think you covered all the points, just you know, distribution of ages, bimodal at 10 to 20 years old or older than 65, and has the essential thing to remember on x-ray, which is the Codman's triangle um, and sunburst pattern. So um, are you going to see either of those then on x-ray? Is that something they need to remember? You either will have this Codman triangle appearance or a sunburst pattern, or are they synonymous? You can see both. You know, this is particularly where you're going to see, like you saw in this patient, where you see that, you know, that edge of that, you know, that outer layer of the bone, the periosteum, typically elevated. Like I said, like you almost stuck a crowbar under there and started trying to pry it off versus the sunburst pattern kind of more looks like, you know, a bunch of rays of sun and like a more round shape uh, to it, which is where you know, it's kind of a more distinct, if you, sorry, we don't have images for these, uh, for you guys, but you can definitely Google these and, and get some uh, good images for them. Radiopedia is a good radiology resource that would have uh, pretty classic appearances of both of these. So yeah, I think it came down to on this case, you know, like you said, the imaging findings. I mean, the thing with a 12 year old boy, this could be Ewing's or osteosarcoma. I think what kind of gives it away a little bit to osteosarcoma is that it's just above the knee. So it's in the distal aspect. But again, you don't want to totally rely on that. That that would you would think more so osteosarcoma because the metaphysis is more in the distal aspect. But again, you want to kind of go off of where, where these you know tumors are arising from and, and the kind of the the classic imaging appearances. And again, these are these classic imaging appearances, and then these locations are you know very high yield for the for the board exam for sure. 
Thank you for watching this video from this new collaboration between DaVinci Academy and Inside the Boards. Again, to listen to the audio, you can go to the Inside the Boards platform or wherever you listen to podcasts. Again, to see that all the DaVinci Academy and Inside the Boards have to offer, be sure to click the links in the description below. Thank you again for watching.